Welcome to the Land House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. Rododo just sent over a 12.8 volt, 100 amp, 1,280 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Say that five times fast. So this company used to be uh, Zooms and they have upgraded to the uh, Rododo company. And so let's pull this battery out of the box and see what this thing is all about. My very first impression on this, before we even look at the battery, the instruction manual that comes with this thing is excellent. Probably the best instruction manual I have seen in a long time. So we'll look at that in just a bit as well. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the box. In the box, it has the nice instruction booklet and then a quick reference guide. It has some good tips in there. You've got your terminals plus the terminal covers. We'll get to those in a moment. It has your typical foam covering for packaging on top there. And then you can pull this battery out right here. The first thing I notice is a lot of these batteries have a case that's black. This one is gray and then white on the side. But let's go ahead and do a quick tour of this battery. Starting from the top, it has a carrying handle which could be removed. You just push the webbing down and then slide it out of the tab if you don't want to have those flapping about. Um, they are nice to have on here if you're going to be carrying this any distance though. You've got your positive and your negative terminals. So you can just pop these little plastic covers off of there. Right here it says the SMY RD220305A1-288. And now if we turn this way, we can see here it says Rododo 12.8 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery. You turn back on this side, it has the uh, watt hours. It's 12.8 volt, 100 amp hours, and 1,280 watt hours, or 1.28 kilowatt hour. As far as the terminals go, let's just open up this little bit of bubble wrap so we can access those. That's quite interesting. It gives you a spare set in case you were to lose one. That's quite nice to know. And then it also has those covers, which I'll show you in a bit. They just cover that uh, bolt head to keep that from being exposed. As far as literature goes, this comes with a quick one-page reference with some helpful info like wear some insulated gloves and then don't touch the terminals together or you will damage the battery. And then it's got things like this can run up to 2000 watts here or more. Uh, gives you a temperature range and uh, don't connect dissimilar batteries together. Don't put it in fire, don't put it in water. Don't open it. And it says, this is pretty interesting, it says you can run this in any direction except upside down. So you could uh, store this on its side and still operate the battery fine. Okay, so now for the more impressive bit of literature. This product manual has so many good things in it. Uh, dimensions of the battery, it's got the uh, size of the terminals. Down here, 12.8 volt, 14.4 for charging uh, voltage. 1,280 watts and 100 amps. Um, but it gives you, I mean, basic things like direction of turning the terminals, how to clamp onto your, uh, your battery. 100 amp hours, 12.8 volt nominal voltage as 1,280 watts. The charge voltage is 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. It's recommended uh, charge current is 20 amps. Battery management system, BMS, is 100 amp. Max continuous charge current, 100 amps. Max continuous discharge current is 100 amps. Maximum charging current, uh, maximum discharge current for five seconds is 280 amps. That's impressive. And IPX65. Okay, so as far as other information goes, it tells you how to check the voltage. It has uh, different graphs for how this will uh, charge and discharge. It's got settings here for um, your controller. It's got uh, different ways you can use alternators or generators. This one's really fun. It's got the capacity chart here. So 100% is 13.5 volts. 99% 13.4 drops down. If you have 12.8 volts, it's at 10%. It will have a uh, disconnect for low voltage at 1%, which is 10.8 volts. And then over here, it's got some uh, series or parallel connection options. And then it shows you how to connect those batteries uh, in the different configurations. And then uh, let's see, uh, balancing the batteries when you connect them. Uh, so yeah, just a, a 
tremendous amount of information can be found here in this manual. Uh, inverter settings, that's nice to know. So yes, uh, definitely an awesome instruction booklet comes with this battery. As recommended by the instruction manual, I'm going to fully charge this battery up before we do our discharge test. So I have right at 500 watts worth of solar panels coming into my studio. So we will charge this up and then see how well it performs with a, uh, a load of about 300 watts being pulled on this. Let's go ahead and get the Redodo battery plugged up to my solar panels here. So I've got a charge controller that I can set to charge up this lithium iron phosphate battery. So let's go ahead, uh, let's see, charge controller's off, solar is off. So let's go ahead and get this plugged up and we'll charge it up fully before uh, doing any kind of testing here. I'm just gonna use some terminals to get this plugged up. Now I do have a little meter I'm gonna hook up here. So let me get that uh, going as well. Uh, it's just a little Drax. Uh, let's see, uh, actually this one needs to go around the positive. Let's see, battery this direction. And that's also got to have the power cord under there. Yep, okay, meter's working. Let me go ahead and turn on my charge controller. On my charge controller, I'm gonna go into the menu, the volts, and I'm gonna increase the uh, absorb and the equalize to 14.4. And then I've got the float at 13.5. And let's go ahead and save that. So now whenever I turn on my solar panels, it's gonna go from the 13.2 and it'll charge up to 13.5. Uh, for a full charge. And like I said, the book for this is great and that's the values I'm using here. The Redodo battery is now fully charged. Let's go into the studio, turn on the lights, and we will go over here and see how this thing performs over the course of about uh, an hour or so. So let me turn on all my lights. This thing should be pulling somewhere around uh, 300 watts. So let me zoom in here real quick to this. So you can see it's got 322 watts right there. Uh, let me go ahead and reset my uh, kilowatt meter here. All right, so I've done a reset there. So we can now check the time on this. So zero minutes passed and we're at 13.1 uh, volts. So. When this thing gets down to 12.8 uh, or so, we will hopefully stop it. And uh, right now we're at 99.6 amp hours. It started at 99.8. So uh, enough time had passed with this meter running and then a few other things up here that it had drained um, 0.2 amp hours. So, um, all right, we'll come back in a little while and see how this thing is performing. Now, as my LED light heats up a little bit, the watt consumption here will actually drop down a bit. So you can see it's uh, 322, 319, something like that. So, and 24.6 uh, amps being used. All right, I'll be back in just a bit to see how this is performing. And I'm back out here. Looks like we're at an hour and one minute. And for our readout here, uh, the watts have dropped down to 250, 19.1 amp, 13.1 volts, and currently we've used uh, 279 watt hours. Now, for some reason, my uh, kilowatt always shows less consumption here. So let's go ahead and scroll through. Uh, so 2. Uh, 0.24 kilowatts, so a little bit less than what this meter right here is showing. But we've got uh, 78.4 amp hours left, so let's continue to run this test. Back down here in the studio, and we've got uh, two hours and six minutes here on the time. And how are we doing over here on the display? So we've got 19.5 uh, amps, 253 watts, 13 volts. We've been going uh, 551 watt hours and we're down to 57.6 amp hours. So we are almost halfway through with this test. It's late, so I'm gonna pause here and then we will pick back up tomorrow 
to finish this up. So uh, that being said, I want to turn off my solar so that it doesn't charge anymore. Well, I started this test back up and we've gone uh, three hours and 12 minutes, but we have dropped down to 12.7 here and only used 844 watt hours, uh, 39.6 amp hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this test and recharge the battery and start it again. And I'll let you know how it looks here um, tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get a full charge and be able to run this again for the full, I'd say about five hours. So, all right, let me go ahead and shut this down for tonight. And I do want to uh, flip solar back on so this will charge up fully tomorrow. I pulled the Rodoto battery off the solar panels when it was at 13.5 volts, so it should be fully charged. And I brought it up here to my bench so we can get hopefully a better test. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to this inverter right here using these cables. And that way I'll be able to uh, work with this here on the bench instead of down there in the floor. Uh, once again though, I am gonna be using that meter so we can see what the uh, output is here. So I'll go ahead and get that set up here. I need to bring a resistor down here to charge these inverters up. So I may get a small pop when I touch this. Nope, good on that one. Nice. All right, so on my meter, I'll bring you in closer, but it says 100 amp hours, 13.3 volts. So hopefully that 100 amp hours is accurate and we'll be able to get a good test out of this. The lights are gonna go off for a second as I transfer my bigger load here to this new inverter. All right, to get an accurate test, I'm going to also uh, make sure that I reset my kilowatt meter. So let me flip on my inverter. We should see a bunch of light come on here. There we go. And then I'm also going to uh, do a reset here on this. This is mostly for the time here. All right, and now let me bring you in close so you can see the display here on my meter. As you can see, we've got 26.9 amps, 355 watts. We're down to 99.5 amp hours, 13.2 volts, and we've used uh, uh, six watt hours. So we will keep an eye on this to see what it looks like here in a couple of hours. Okay, let's see what we're at here. I've got two hours and five minutes on the kilowatt meter. And let's go ahead and bring up this so you can see here. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, hopefully you can see that fine. 12.9 uh, volts, we've got 52.9 amp hours left, about 22 amps coming out, 282 watts, and we've used 616 watt hours. Now we were at 350 watts earlier, but as my uh, studio lights heat up, the uh, output is not quite as, um, as high as it is now. All right, um, so this thing on the inverter, it says, 12.8 volts on the battery. Let's see where we are here on my multimeter. So that's saying 12.79. So I don't wanna run that too much lower. Uh, just for reference purposes, I'm gonna bring up the little booklet here. And so it's saying at 12.8 uh, volts, this is where we are now, it's got 10% left. So. Uh, for some reason, this does not seem to be showing the uh, capacity that is on the, um, the, the information. So anyway, 12.9 right here. We'll wait till this drops to 12.8 and we'll call the test. Okay, just step back out here again. We're at two hours and 55 minutes and we are now at 12.6 or 12.7 volts. And we still have 34.7 amp hours, but I'm gonna have to call the test here because that is uh, too low. So lights are going off. I just swapped my lights back over to my other battery. So after three hours of time, we have 850 watt hours. Now, once I turn this off, uh, jump back up to 12.9 uh, volts here on the battery. Um, but it was scaring me being 12.5 uh, volts, which was uh, too low when it was on. So, but I don't think I'm gonna get another 400 uh, watt hours here on this battery without it just being way too low. Um, so anyway, uh, 
I had it charged up fully twice, and then both times it did not perform as I was hoping or as advertised. So uh, that's my conclusion here on the Rododo battery discharge. And that's my first look at the Rododo 12.8 lithium iron phosphate battery, advertised to have 100 amp hours and 1,280 watt hours. So I saw that after three hours, it went from 13.5 uh, volts down to 12.5 volts and had um, 850 watt hours. So um, does not seem to be performing as advertised, but I'm gonna be doing another test with this battery on my Tools, Tech, and Gear channel and see if perhaps I can't get this thing to uh, hit spec. But anyway, I'm Seth with Land of House. If you wanna check out this battery, I have a link in the description down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.